Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Rob Willis.info here, and in today's video I'm going to be talking about part 2 of installing Elk 7 on Windows Server 2016. So in part 1, I covered installing and configuring Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana as Windows services. I also installed and configured WinLogBeat to forward the, uh, the logs from the local instance into the Elastic stack. Uh, and then finally we covered installing and configuring Curator to help maintain the instance long term and delete data as it gets older. And so this video is going to pick up right where we left off in that first one. So if you haven't checked that out, you might want to go back and check it out now. Go ahead and pause the video. I'll have links down below to all that stuff. Um, but yeah, so everything in this video is going to build on top of what was created in that first video. So in this video, I'm going to cover how to set up clients to report back to the Elk instance that was created in the first one. Um, so what I'm going to cover specifically is going to be installing and configuring WinLogBeat on another on a separate uh, Windows 2016 client server. I'm also going to install and configure Sysmon on that server as well, and that's going to provide some additional uh, logging that you don't get natively in Windows. Things like uh, process creation events, um, network connections, those kind of things. Uh, and then finally, I'm going to show how to update the WinLogBeat configuration file to pick up those Sysmon events, as well as enabling and um, picking up the uh, PowerShell events as well. And so just to quickly recap, this is how I laid things out in the first video. But the first video focused on mainly that Elk server on the right-hand side, getting it up and running, building it out, and getting it ingesting logs from itself. Now in this video, I'm going to focus on the clients running beats on the left-hand side. So we're going to set them up and get them forwarding their event logs over to the Elk instance so they can be stored in Elasticsearch. And that way we can search through them in Kibana. And so all these hosts are going to be on the same network so they will have network connectivity to each other. Alright, and so one last thing I wanted to show before we get started with the uh, install of uh, all the applications is that I do have, these are two separate 2016 servers here. So you'll see I have the Elk 7 server on the left hand side and the Elk 7 client on the right hand side. And of course they have two separate IP addresses. Um, but the, the server on the left hand side is the one from the previous video. So we've got uh, Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana all up and running on that. Um, but notice on that left hand side there that it, right now it is only um, ingesting logs from itself. It's not receiving any logs from any other clients at this point. And actually let's just give us a second to refresh here. I just want to make sure that you see that you can tell um, by uh, expanding out the, the hostname field that what hosts are actually sending data back into the Elk instance. And if you notice here it actually only says the, uh, the Elk 7 server itself is the only thing, is the only host that's showing up in that list right now. Um, later on we'll be able to see that the additional host show up in there and verify that everything's working correctly. All right, so now we're on just the client server and kind of jumping right into things. So uh, just like the first video, I'm going to have a blog post to go along with this, and we'll have all the steps, links, configuration files, everything that I referenced in the video will also be on the blog post, and I'll have links to all that stuff down below. Uh, but the video and blog post will go hand in hand. So um, so the first thing we need to do is download WinLogBeat from uh, Elastic, and I'm going to get the 64-bit version because 64-bit OS. And then next up, we need to get Sysmon, which is just going to come from Microsoft. Um, but you'll see that it has quite a few uh, capabilities and it can provide some really interesting data that you can't normally get in the Windows event logs. So, And then the one thing about Sysmon is that it actually requires a configuration file to tell it what to log. So for the configuration file, I'm actually going to use Swift on Security's Sysmon config, um, which is a very, has, it's a very nice balance between um, recording enough stuff without recording too much stuff. Uh, and pr it basically provides a lot of value without a lot of volume. Um, and you can get that off of GitHub. So I've already gone ahead and downloaded all these files and extracted them out. And so now we can basically go ahead and get started with the installs. All right, so first up is going to be the uh, WinLogBeak installation. And um, it's actually going to be basically the same as it was on the Elk server itself. Um, so we're going to get a zip package from Elastic. You're going to have to extract that and then copy and paste it into what's going to be its permanent home. So in the first video, I use uh, C program data for basically everything. So just to keep things consistent, I'm going to use that here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my WinLogBeak folder that's already extracted. I'm going to see program, uh, so you see the folder is actually hidden, so let me just show those hidden folders real quick. And I'm going to view, show hidden files and folders. I'm also going to tell to show the extension for file types. Um, and then we're going to go inside program data, and I'm going to create a new folder named Elastic. And then I'm going to paste my WinLogBeat installation inside that folder. So we've got C, program data, Elastic, and then WinLogBeat is going to be installed right there. All right, so the first thing we want to do is pull up the WinLogBeat configuration file, the .yml here. I'm going to edit it with Notepad real quick. And um, so you'll notice that it's got the, uh, the logs that it's going to be picking up. So it's going to be the application, the security and system logs. And then the next thing we're going to do is there's going to be the elastic search output. Um, so we're going to be using logs, Logstash. So we actually want to uh, comment out the output field here and then the host one as well. 
and then down below that you'll see the logs dash output and we want to go ahead and uncomment the output and also uncomment the host so I'm just going to go ahead and delete that real quick and then delete the one in front of the host as well and then I need to change the local host to the IP address of the elk server so this, this client server is going to be dot 207 and the elk server is actually dot 206 and then specifying the port of 5044 where logstash is going to be listening on and so just to show you real quick let me pull up the elk server and we see that it is the uh, the 206 IP address is going to be the elk server itself so uh, we just want to make sure that that's the IP address that we plug into the the output option there um, so like I said go ahead and comment out the Elasticsearch output in the host field and then on the log stash, log stash section go ahead and uncomment the output along with the host and uh, plug in the IP address of the elk server itself all right, so now that we got the uh, configuration file set up, it's time to go ahead and install the service. So the um, WinLogBeat comes with an installation script, so I'm just going to run that, and that's going to create the service for me. Um, so I'm going to cd to c program, um, actually c program data, and then it's going to be Elasticsearch or Elastic, and then WinLogBeat, and that's the folder that we pasted earlier. And I'm just going to run dir real quick, and we see that the install script is there. Um, so I'm going to do powershell.exe um, dash execution policy bypass so that way we don't get blocked by that and then I'm just going to dot slash and point it to that install powershell script and I'm going to go ahead and run that and we see that it looks like it created that service successfully and so like I mentioned earlier all this uh, the stuff I did in the configuration file along with this command that I just ran is all going to be on the log post that goes along with this so you can find all that stuff there um, but I'm going to I'm going to pull up services.msc real quick and just verify that it did actually create that service and it's going to be win log beat. We see that it is there. And let's go ahead and start that. And then, actually, I'm going to refresh that real quick just to make sure that it stays up and running. And it does. And that's it. So we've actually got win log beat installed on the server now. So at this point, we should actually have logs going into the Elk instance from this client server. Um, but I'm not going to show that right now. We'll come back to that later just to save some time. So next up is going to be the uh, Sysmon installation and configuration. And so the first thing we need to do here is unpack sysmon and place it into what's going to be its permanent home. So in this case, I'm going to use C program files, and I'm just going to create a folder named sysmon. And I'm going to put the uh, sysmon executable in the configuration file into that directory. So I'm just going to open that up real quick. And I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to take the sysmon64.exe, and I'm going to copy and paste that over into the sysmon directory. And then I'm also going to grab that configuration file, the one from Swift on Security that we downloaded from GitHub. And I'm going to copy that and paste it into that same directory as well. All right, so now that we got the, the file staged, I'm going to go ahead and copy this command here. And this is going to be used to install Sysmon as a service. So I'm just going to copy that and pull up command prop real quick. And I'm going to have to CD over to the, uh, the installation directory where we just put Sysmon. So I'm going to CD to C program file Sysmon, pull up dirt real quick, make sure I'm in the right place. And you see that I am. So I'm going to dot slash sysmon64.exe dash accept eula dash i and point that to the configuration file. And that's it. You hit enter and we see that it actually goes ahead and creates a service and everything for us and actually starts it as well. So let's go ahead and I'm going to pull up services.msc and just verify that it did actually create that service. And we see the uh, sysmon64 service and it is running. All right, so now that we got Sysmon installed, I just want to show you where the logs go real quick. And I'm going to go ahead and pull up Event Viewer and then expand this real quick. And then it's going to be under the Application and Services logs. So I'm going to go and expand that out. And then it's going to be under Microsoft and then Windows. And there's, you're going to see there's a ton of applications listed under here. So let me just navigate down here and find Sysmon real quick. Okay, there we go, and we see the uh, Sysmon operational logs, and uh, oh, look at that, we have actually got some events in there already, so we've got some process creations, and oh, so it actually caught uh, the installation of the, um, the Sysmon itself, and that's it, so this is, we're going to need to know this location later on though for the WinLog Beat configuration to tell it where to find these logs and then pick them up, um, but that's it, Sysmon successfully installed and running as a service at this point. All right, so next up, I want to show how to uh, enable the PowerShell logs and then where those logs are going to be located so we can pick them up later on. Um, so the first thing to do is pull up gpedit.msc because these are going to be group policy items that we need to enable to uh, enable the PowerShell logs. So I'm just going to go ahead and expand this window out here real quick.
and then it's going to be under computer configuration and we're going to go to administrative templates windows components and then powershell or windows powershell actually and you're going to see there's a couple policies that we can actually use here but the main ones i want to focus on for this video are the module logging and the script block logging um, there's always there's also uh, transcription logging um, which will be recorded to a flat file so you would need something like filebeat to pick that one up and uh, there would also be some additional parsing that goes along with that but like i said for the, the purpose of this video i'm only going to focus on the module logging and the script block logging here so i'm just going to right click and edit and I'm going to enable that and then for the module names I'm just going to set a wildcard here so that we make sure that it just basically captures a log for all modules <clears throat> and I'm going to hit OK and apply and I'm going to click on edit for the next one for the script block and I'm going to enable that and I'm not going to check this uh, log script block invocation start and stop because it can be pretty noisy and it doesn't really have a whole lot of value and so I'm going to click um, apply and click OK and I just want to go back and double check that uh, the module logging real quick and we see that I'm just going to record like I said we're looking to um, log all modules basically so we're going to capture everything and uh, that's it so the logs are enabled at this point and now let me go ahead and show you where these logs are going to be um, so there actually ends up being two logs um, one of them is enabled by default and that's going to be so they're going to be under application services Microsoft and then you'll notice that there's going to be a Windows PowerShell one there now this is not the logs that we just enabled now there is some useful information in this log, but it's kind of inconsistent about, um, it's kind of hard to tell what is actually going to get logged into this log. Um, but you can find some things like PowerShell downgrade attacks, like um, people trying to downgrade to PowerShell v2 to avoid the script block logging and that kind of stuff. Um, you can detect that through here. So it is a useful log to get, um, but the, the real useful and valuable logs are going to be in the, uh, the other PowerShell operational logs, which you can find under here and we're going to expand this out and it's the operational one and uh, so this is where you're going to see like the 4104 is going to be the script block logging and then 4103 will be the uh, the module logging um, but with these ones you can actually see the entire source code that ran from a script so it's super useful to have and uh, depending on what version of PowerShell and if uh, AMC is available you can actually see uh, deobfuscated scripts and everything you'll see basically everything as it was when it actually executed on the machine. So it can be super useful, especially from an IR or a security perspective to have these logs available. All right, so now that we got all of our agents set up and our uh, PowerShell logs enabled, it's time to go and edit and update the uh, WinLogBeat configuration file. So I'm gonna go back to C program data, Elastic, WinLogBeat, and open up that WinLogBeat.yml configuration file. And this is the same one that we were in earlier. Um, but it, so if you noticed earlier, I mentioned that it was going to do the application security and system logs. And this is where we're going to add the additional logs that we want here. So I'm going to copy these bottom three lines here for the PowerShell logs, the Sysmon, and the PowerShell operational logs. And I'm just going to copy that and then paste it right into that configuration file. And you want to make sure everything stays uh, lined up. The, the YAML configuration files are a little sensitive to uh, spacing and, and indenting and that stuff. So make sure this all stays lined up here. Um, but paste those, uh, those logs into there and then go ahead and save that configuration file. And then next we need to go and restart the WinLogBeat service so it picks up that new configuration file. And I'm just going to right click and restart. And that's it. So now WinLogBeat should be able to pick up all of the additional logs that we have and it should be sending them over into the Elk instance. So let's go ahead and check that out and see if it actually works. All right, so now I'm back over in Kibana on the, uh, the Elk server itself and I'm just gonna click on refresh real quick and let's see if we got some new logs flowing in here but we can already see on that, that first event there we see the host name of the Elk 7 client. Um, but I'm just gonna expand this field over here, the host name and we see that we do have logs from both the client and the server coming into the Elk instance now. And um, let me just scroll down here and see if I can show the uh, the provider so we can see uh, what types of logs are coming in. And it should be, yeah, there we go. And so we see, okay, so we see our Sysmon and we see PowerShell along with the other traditional Windows stuff. And so let's go back up here and let's start filtering this out a little bit and so I can give you a little better idea of what this, uh, this can look like. Um, when you start searching through data in Elk. So I'm going to go ahead and add that provider. So we got right now we just got our timestamp and our provider name. And I'm going to go ahead and add this hostname field. And you see how it just adds it into our, uh, our pane over there. And then from there we can just kind of keep adding things into this and giving us the view that we want. So let's go ahead and add the event codes. And we see now, let's go and add the, uh, yeah, the message there. 
Nice. So as you can see, this presents a very um, easy to read and very digestible view of all of the log data that's going on in the environment. And we can then search through this data and break it down in different ways to kind of target specific things that we're looking for or hunting for. Um, so like in this case, if I add this event code here, I can actually then change this and I can look for a very specific event ID that I would, you know, if I was looking for something in particular. So in this case, I'll do 4104, which should be the PowerShell script block logs. And there we go, we see all the data associated with that. So from an administrative or engineering perspective, you could imagine that this is an incredibly useful tool to have. Um, it'll, it definitely allows to um, very rapidly triage issues, you know, investigations, any of that kind of stuff. And it allows you to um, very quickly narrow down to the, the specific data that you're looking for and provide value to for whatever you're working on. Um, it could be troubleshooting something. It, it could be looking into, you know, like I said, a security related incident or something like that. Um, but having all that data available and being able to search through it so quickly um, can really speed up the, uh, the, time, the amount of time it takes to triage something. Um, and so I'm going to switch over to the client server real quick and just show that I can pull up Kibana on this server as well. Now one thing you might want to notice is that there is no authentication in front of this. Now there are some ways around that, none of them I'm going to get into in this video, um, but you can do there's some plugins or you could run like a reverse proxy in front of it and do like some basic authentication. Um, but like I said, I'm not going to get into any of that, but you do want to note that there is not authentication in front of this. And so uh, there you have it. We now have Elk 7 up and running on a Windows 2016 server, along with another Windows 2016 server reporting back its logs. And not only the Windows event logs, but also the Sysmon and PowerShell logs. And uh, yeah, so I think that's pretty much going to be it for this one. Um, so as always, I thank you guys for watching. I hope you found out something useful from this video. And uh, I'll see you next time.